been a few years since we last spoke and there's been so much growth in your artistry and what's played the biggest role in that development? Yeah, honestly, uh, when I released my first album opening night and then I did the holiday album like right after I went right in and just created that. I think I just went through, um, it was, you know, it was COVID and I had these expectations of what I expected, you know, from the release of the album. I was like, oh, I'm going to tour the world. It's going to be incredible. And da, 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 da. and it was like, it felt like the pinnacle of like when I was, it felt like that part of the movie where you're like, I'm going to, they, this is where they achieve everything. And then you just, you put all this work in and you feel like it's the moment and it's just not. And I think I went down, I just kind of fell into a very deep depression and I just was questioning if I even wanted to continue doing music, not because I didn't love it, but because I just, I just was so hurt. I was so, I just felt like I did everything I could and it didn't work. And so I would say the biggest thing that I did, the biggest, um, as you say, my, my artistry has grown. I think I just truly during that time during COVID and like, you know, in the creation of this process, that's pretty much when it started happening. I just kind of dove back into everything artistically and creatively that I loved from, you know, singing, dancing, scoring, producing music, playing music, um, film, uh, acting, and like even doing like musical theater and stuff. Like just, I, I kind of just dove mm. back into all, to everything that got me into this in the first place. And I think what that resulted in was this cornucopia of, um, you know, what cult classic is, which is, I also love horror. And I was like, I, it was just basically all of my favorite things all into one body of work, one experience, if you will, for a viewer, for anyone who just is a voracious, like, you know, intaker of music of any kind and then like art. And I just kind of wanted to create something that was going to get me excited again. Cause I really was just kind of I lost the excitement of just, you know, singing a song and writing a song, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? I wanted to create something that just, that I could step into a world that I felt proud of and that, because sometimes this world that we're in, I, I think I just wanted to escape it, you know? This industry is from the singles market, but what I really appreciate about you is that you've continued to bring these larger projects that work so cohesively together. What inspired cult classics and why was it so important for you to have that individuality and not kind of succumb to the pressures of the industry? You know, I, I kept looking around and just saying uh, in terms of, the, like you said, the scope of the industry and how people are releasing singles all the time. I would never disparage that uh, that that uh, marketing plan. It actually makes a lot of sense. You know, and I, I just think that as someone who is a pretty autonomous creative and someone who does I produce all my own work, I, I do. I'm very hands on. It takes a lot for me to even like songs that I do. Like once I love a mm. song, I love it forever. But um. But it takes a long time for me to do that. I just think I kept looking around and just getting frustrated with myself. Like, why why can't I have the same output that these other artists have? Like, I'm trying, but I, I don't, I, it's just not me. And so I think I kept feeling like I had this imposter syndrome throughout that time. But during COVID, I started researching directors a lot more, like directors and auteurs, like people who, you know, because I, I just kept thinking about this cult classic idea. I kept thinking about Johnny, this this world that I just had in my head. But everyone and I was like, it's a film, it's a film, it's a, it's this big experience. But everyone's like, John, like no one knows who you are. Like, why well, can't like you can't you can't just like do that and and mm. you know and expect people to watch. But what I kept when I started re researching more about directors and whatnot, they get obsessed and excited over one idea, one world for like five years until that thing happens. You know, whether that's Wes Anderson, whether that's Martin Scorsese, whether that's you know, uh, uh, Jordan Peele, like whether that whoever that is, you know, like they they get very excited and stimulated by this world, and each director has their own skill set that they kind of lean into. Whether with Wes Anderson, it's his architecture and his poetry. With Gene Kelly, it's his dancing and choreography. With um, mm. you know, there's so many like directors have their own unique skill set. With like Tim Burton, it's his illustrations and how he makes that be what it is, you know. And with me, my skill set happens to be. You know, my, with you know, it has to be music, singing, and performance, and like dancing and creating music. I happen to have a pretty amazing pop background and like producing and all of that stuff, and like creating that kind of style. So I just I think embracing that part of myself, that that directorial side that I never allowed myself to embrace, helped me create art in a different way and package it in a way that I think that only I know how. And I, I hopefully you know, people enjoy it and wanted, I just, I wanted to give the listener or viewer the option of diving in as deep as they want to, whether that's just a single, because like the songs, there are pop friendly songs, like yeah. songs that are just, 
you know, like, like straight down the middle that they have a very big narrative based context, but like as a song by themselves, like people can listen to the song. Oh, I like this song. This is great. Or they can be like, Oh, I like the costumes in this film. That's really cool. Yeah. Or I love the whole story. I want to watch the whole film or I love the whole album. I wanted to give, like, I'm working on like developing a video game for the world. I'm working on developing like all these things. I want to give people the option of diving in as deeply as they want to, you know? Yeah. There's so many different facets to your talent, which you're getting to put on full display on this album. And you just touched upon this, but how early on did you know you wanted to bring that visual component, specifically a full length feature? And how do how have your different aspects of your artistry lend themselves to one another on this project? Well, I think um, as I said, going back to um fi- like falling in love with what made me fall in love with with music all over again. I I used to think it was like, oh, Michael Jackson was the first thing I ever saw. That was that. But really, it was singing in the rain when I was five. When I saw yeah. singing in the rain at a young age, I remember looking at the, you know, Gene Kelly and Donald O'Connor, Debbie Reynolds on screen and being like, this is unbelievable. And all, and the characters in the film, Donald O'Connor's character in particular is he's the funny guy. He's dancing. He's acting. He's writing the music. He's playing piano. He's singing. He's he's uh, acting. And, and I just thought that I was like, oh, this guy should be the main character. He's doing everything. Like, like, like who's. Like, why aren't we paying attention to him? He's he's the one that should do is doing it all. And I think that knowing at a young age, seeing him, I just remembered and Gene Kelly, obviously. And but I just remember, like, I think subconsciously, I've always been manifesting that in my mind. But I was manifest. I thought I was manifesting like this really big pop star career because I was like that. That's how you get there. But I think in actuality, your brain is so strong. I think I was actually manifesting what cult classic is because it has the hints of michael jackson it has yeah halloween like i love it has you know singing in the rain type stuff and it also has like you know tim burton and all that stuff that i love so it's it's a that that was what i first fell in love with was that and i think that i just have manifested it over the course of my entire life and and everything that has been that i've been through up until this point has been training for this thing that i put out and every project that i put out I get sub I get substantially better at different facets of my skill set, which is so cool. All I care about is really getting better, you know. There's this universal quality to your lyrics, but it's also so personal to your own experiences. How have you been able to toe that line so seamlessly while adding that cinematic flair to it? Well, lyrically, this album was really difficult because I was dealing with really, you know, I think up until this point, I was a very positive artist. You know what I mean? I talk about, mm. you know, like like I had a very um I have, and I'm not saying I'm not a positive person, but I, I had a very like believe in yourself type mentality. You can do anything like that kind of thing. And I still feel that way, but I think I had to ste- face these very detrimental, negative, emotionally tormenting thoughts that I was dealing with throughout. And I had to put those on display, which is not easy for me to do. Cause I always say throughout, throughout my career, I've been told I need to be more confident. I need to have more like swag when I walk into swagger, when I walk into a room, I need to command all this attention. And what I love about Johnny in particular is that he's a version of me. He's the version of me that's not confident at all. Like Johnny is very, Mm. he's very compelling and exciting because he can do all these really crazy things, but socially and, you know, his presence, he's very, like very scared and insecure. A lot of the time you can see it very clearly. So I think that I wanted to create a character that people could relate to in the sense of like, we're not actually confident a lot of times. Like a lot of people don't Mm. feel confident walking into a room I, I have to think about what I have to say and I, I have to think about all these things all the time and I just I think that um Johnny was supposed to create that experience like basically like demystify that experience for people to show them like oh this is this is I feel like Johnny too um and that's why lyrically I hope that it's universally understood by people because everyone goes through those emotions but Johnny is definitely the pinnacle of those negative feelings when it's like i'm at my lowest this is how i feel you know so um i I think just facing those feelings head on and and basically disclosing that to the world was a was definitely hard to do and to do in an eloquent way that didn't feel contrived but um i i'm very happy with the way it turned out yeah that actually might be the answer to this next question but if you had to pick a song off of the album that best encompasses who you are as an artist in this moment, which would it be and why? I would say don't be scared probably because don't be scared is the moment on the album. Uh, you'll see it in the film eventually when it comes out, uh, mm-hmm. but that that is more, it, it sounds like a lullaby or like, you know, like you're, you're reassuring someone, but like the song was written as a reassurance 
as like as reassurance to myself to my younger self essentially and i think that that song is acknowledging all the pain acknowledging all of the insecurity acknowledging all of the frustration that i felt so often in my career and in my life and just existing um but also telling that per- person that it's it's okay you're going to be okay and and still having that uplifting feeling as as you're going to pull yourself out of that moment um i think that that is the most human experience type of song i've i've written too in that sense because it it gives a full arc of um the pain the struggle the loss and then the resolution to it all when whereas a lot of times you're focusing on one part of those things whether that's pain whether that's the resolution whether that's you know the struggle this is kind of all of that all in one you know you also had a really small crew for this feature film but it feels so large in scale what was it like collaborating with your team specifically your your co-director josh to build this cinematic universe it's it's been really really cool that that um that I've heard a couple people say that 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 the that the production seems very large scale and really bro like like we're just there are times where I'm holding the boom where I'm holding the microphone for people to like deliver their lines you know but but I'm so happy that I researched the camera I wanted to use for a long time the camera was the Sony FX3 they just shot the creator on it um uh uh what is it John David Washington who who's who stars in that film they they shot the whole movie on the same camera that I have and I researched the, the way I wanted to color it and use all that stuff in the editing room which I'm I got to edit the whole film which is so cool but um I would say putting together the putting people in place that I know are very down and and just every direct every person that's working on the film which is super cool you would think this wouldn't work but it kind of is we're all writer directors in our own right mm. like we all like alexei who's my cinematographer he's a writer director as well uh josh is a writer director he's working on his own feature that he's writing and my friend brad who's our first ac who's actually alexei alexei's friend who's who does cinematography as well in the film he's a writer director himself so all of us are willing to wear a million different hats, which is what directors inherently do to get this job done. And we're all like working on each other's films simultaneously. So I think, I think we just have a lot of hungry, young, talented people who are just still trying to get our name out there. And, and also um, I, I researched um, locations very thoroughly to make sure that we had the right feel for everything. And, and the, 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 um, attention to detail is all there from the from the screenwriting to everything but yeah I, I would say the biggest thing is the fact that we're all like writer directors so we, we just want we want the film to have the most integrity possible and we're willing to you know do whatever role we need to do on that day to make it possible you know when you drop part one back in november when can fans expect part two and is there anything that you can tease about it yeah so part two um we're shooting actually now moving forward because it's a whole feature film like it's it's going to be released in six parts Mm. But it's it's a, it's written as a script as a whole feature film. We're just breaking it up, literally breaking the script up into these pages and then ending it there for for each release. So we're actually we've been shooting part two and part three. We've even shot parts of part five and part six already. We're kind of treating it as a whole thing. But we're we're hoping to wrap all shots for part two um by January thirteenth. And so I'm hoping to then um I would like to release part two probably in february so i give myself a little time to uh edit it out a little bit and but then also be able to release part three shortly after because i don't want there to, this was kind of part one was honestly like i don't want to say a test run but we were just like like bro can we even like do this like you know is this even possible and then we we did it and and it happened and so now i know okay i've done this i can do this again and so that's kind of the mentality there and teasing about it there's going to be a really cool, um, we're bringing in more of like, um, there's going to be more dancing in this one for sure in part two. Um, there's going to be more characters introduced and there's going to be a really cool like dance. Um, like you're going to get, in, like everyone loves like an 80s high school dance and it's it's going to have yeah. that kind of, it's going to be really, really like that kind of, um, we all latch on to that feeling, you know, and like in films or even in music, like we love those kind of sequences and there's going to be sequences like that in this one, which will be cool. You're definitely bringing in the 80 feel with the, with this film. And, you know, we, we've got the album now. We've got the film that's coming. You've released merch. You just teased about a video game. What else are you going to add to this universe? Well, definitely, Um, as we keep releasing, I want to make sure that, like, costumes come out. Like, people can, like, dress up as mm. Johnny or, like, dress up as certain characters, like the shapes for Halloween and stuff. I, I could see that being something really cool. I want to do... um. 
obviously want to novelize the film and when it's done and release it as like, you know, something that people could read or like comic book style. I would love to do that. Um, oh, that'd be cool. Definitely would love to do director's commentary style releases whenever the film is fully done. Like that would be, I, I don't know if, if, you know, people are into that, but I, I personally love doing that when I'm a fan of a film. I love like hearing what they have to say about how they got it. I think one thing would be that would be really cool is creating some form of culture around um, renting out a theater, maybe maybe before the when the film's out mm. or right before it's coming out, and like kind of creating that weekly Rocky Horror type of like exclusivity where you can only see the film in theaters at this one theater. I would love to create that culture and people encourage people to dress up and have them have that experience. Like I said, similar to um, the Rocky Horror Picture Show and what that what that meant to a lot of people. Um, that those are things that I'm looking forward to now and definitely. Like touring it, I've I've entered this into a lot of film festivals as well. I would love to, um, you know, get this, you know, just tour it as well whenever it gets to a certain point. I I just I could see this project and this. I envisioned it initially as being its own respective brand, so I feel like it could be as yeah. big as it wants to be. You know.